Thank you, uh, Councilman Constantinides. My name is Richard Reese. I edit a project called City Atlas based at the Institute for Sustainable Cities. Uh, today I'm speaking on my own behalf. Uh, we, we support, I can say that we support these bills. It's important uh, that the city has more accurate accounting of all the emissions and has as ambitious goals as possible at this point. Um, and so the, the leadership and the leadership of, of the city council is, is really crucial. Um, I wanted just briefly today, and my written testimony kind of spells out what we're thinking, but I'll just show some examples to show the scale of the challenge, because I think part of it is this conversation that we're having in this room today has to be replicated across the city because most people in New York are not yet directly engaged with this issue. So just as a reminder of what the C40 Cities calls the 2020 challenge, this is the rate of emission reductions that we are committed to for the 1.5C target. It's like a ski slope. It's like a very challenging Olympic ski slope. Uh, New York is, is in the highest category of, of emissions for a city. These are other cities around the world that each have their own targets. Um, and that's an equity problem. Uh, but I mean, for us also, because we have to protect our own city and the way we do that is by cutting emissions. And within New York City, emissions are an equity issue because there's such a wide disparity in the amount of emissions people produce. So the, the top 10% in the US averages about 50 tons of individual emissions. Uh, the bottom 50% averages below 10 tons. So that's, that's an enormous disparity. And that, that's largely going to hold true in New York. So if you have 10 New Yorkers, nine of them will average about 10 tons, and one of them will average around 50 tons. So we need to find a way to engage people across the city. The top 10% of the city is about 860,000 people. And I think they're, they're mostly well-intentioned, they're well-educated, but no one really, and I include, you know, really the world I come from, most of my friends, has yet fully engaged with this issue in terms of their own life. In a sense, everybody's sort of living as we've always lived. We haven't started to adjust. And uh, that has to happen, that has to happen fairly fast because of this. Um, the, last, the last chart I have here shows that this conversation is actually picking up speed in Europe. So Greta Thunberg, of course, is now a, a worldwide recognized figure, and she sort of exemplifies that idea of, of understanding how rapidly we need to change how we live our lives, you know, how we think about this as an overall issue. And what we specifically follow on a more practical, immediate level is uh, cities in other cities in other places, uh, nations that are starting to take this into account. So Paris uh, and Barcelona both have programs to educate the public. Finland has a national program. I'll just quickly show this because this is the UK is having a uh, citizens assembly right now, and the discussion there is getting as far as showing what it actually takes to achieve the Paris goals if you don't have new technology to make it easier. And it's, the one thing I'll point out here is this shows air travel. And they, this is actually from Cambridge University and it just ramps down air travel to the point that you're closing the airports until you can, after 2050, develop technology that allows you to return to air travel. So these are enormous shifts in the way we live our, our lives, um, but there's very little time to work out how we negotiate uh, you know, making these changes. 
so we'll put I'll put you know the written testimony we have online. You can follow City Atlas on Twitter. It's at City Atlas. And now I'll turn it over to someone who works with us, Archie.